This video is about potential dividers. Uh, if you've understood the work that we've done previously about resistors in series and parallel circuits, actually it should be fairly straightforward for you. Um, not a lot to add really, we've just got to do circuits where we've got two resistors and they are, as it says, dividing, they're sharing the potential difference around the circuit. Um, and look at specific applications of these, for example in circuits measuring temperature or light levels. So we're going to look first of all at uh, some circuits just to see if we can understand the context for this lesson. So often what happens in GCSE is people imagine, yeah I know about how to um, measure temperature, I need a thermistor, so here's my thermistor. I'm going to connect that to a, um, some sort of battery and I'm going to measure the PD across the thermistor. But of course, as hopefully you'll realise now, what happens if you do that is that allows you change the temperature, the resistance of the thermistor changes, right? If it's the only thing in the circuit, then the EMF of the supply will be equal to the PDs around the circuit, the sum of the PDs around the loop of the circuit. Well, here it is, 9 volts there, all 9 volts are here, the current's changing, but the PD across the thermistor isn't. So if your computer or whatever you want to use, your circuit is linked to this thermistor, this is effectively how it knows what the temperature is. So it doesn't know what the temperature is because this voltage isn't changing. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to have your thermistor, but you also need to have another resistor in the circuit, and these two resistors are in series. So what happens now is some of the PDs across here the rest of the PDs across here, okay, the computers normally use this one. This, as you'll see, will go high when the temperature is high. So if the temperature is high, the resistance of this is lower. We get more current in the circuit because the total resistance is lower. You get more current, which means we get more voltage across this resistor. Okay, explaining the voltage across this resistor is quite hard because, okay, the current is increasing, but the resistance is decreasing. Therefore, working out what happens to the current is a bit tricky. Okay, but you can see, hopefully, in the top resistor there, that the lower the temperature goes, the more resistance I've got here, the less the current is. So in this circuit, it's much easier to understand what's going on because the resistance is staying the same. So if the current increases, the PD increases. Okay, so that's our basic potential divider circuit. If you just wanted to build something to turn on at a specific temperature, so say when it gets to 5 volts, so it gets to 5 volts when the temperature is about here, about 30 degrees C, okay, that will do that job for you. But if you wanted to change the circuit, you'd have to change the value of this resistor. So this is a slightly more practical circuit for most applications. Um, in principle, exactly the same as this one, but now we've got a variable resistor here. So if I put this on 20... Um, kilohms, as near as I can get it. Okay, it's the same as that circuit, and that will get to 5 volts when this gets to about 30 degrees C. But if I decide that, you know, I'm using this in to, heat, to uh, control the temperature in a building and 30 degrees C is a bit hot for turning heating on, and I'd like to turn the heating on when it gets to 20 degrees C, okay, then I can just adjust this variable resistor and find a suitable value so that this is 5 volts. Okay, so I need a 28.5 kilohm resistor. Okay, so this just makes the circuit controllable, but in principle it's the same as this circuit. We're dividing the potential between these two resistors. Okay, so if we go through the uh, maths of this, okay, these are the steps. So here's my resistor. I've just put a fixed resistor in here for now. We'll come back to a thermistor in a minute. Put a fixed resistor in here first job is to find the PD across the 5 kilo resistor. So here it is. How do we do that? Okay, hopefully long ago you've long lost the idea that we can do 9 volts because we've got seen a voltage around here that's shared between these two. Hopefully you're not using any dodgy ratio methods. It'll work sometimes and sometimes it'll make you go completely wrong. Okay, let's do it properly. So we work out the total resistance in the circuit. 10 plus 5 is 15 kilo ohms. Then we work out the current in the circuit, V over R, we've got 9 volts across the whole circuit. So 9 divided by 15 kilo ohms gives us 6 times 10 to the minus 4 amps, or 0.6 milliamps. And then work out the voltage here, well we know that 0.6 milliamps is going around the circuit. So there's 0.6 milliamps through here, across a 5 kilo ohm resistor, which gives us 3 volts. 
Okay, what happens if the resistance of the 10 kilo ohm resistor decreases? This is where we've got to explain again carefully. The total resistance of the circuit decreases, which means that the current will increase. And then if we worry about this part of the circuit, we've got more current through the same resistance. Therefore, this voltage here will increase. Okay, we don't need in these circuits, you'll notice that um, internal resistance has disappeared again from our considerations, but in this kind of circuit we certainly don't need to worry about it because the current is very, very small. We've only got 0 0.6 milliamps, so even if this is 9 volts um, EMF and it has got a little internal resistance, right, the drop, the lost volts here will be too small for us to worry about. Okay, here's a more practical application with the thermistor. So the thermistor would replace where we have the 10,000 ohm resistor. Um, so the circuit's going to look exactly the same, but now we've got a, a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a thermistor. So at 20 degrees C, the current, uh, sorry, the current in the circuit will be the total resistance, which is our 1K fixed one, plus at 20 degrees C, if we read it off the graph, we've got 720 ohms. Uh, say 1720 that should say um, so this gives a current in the circuit of V well it would connect to a 9 volt battery so the guy gives us 5.23 milliamps um, so the PD across the fixed resistor our 1000 ohm resistor will be the current times the resistance so it'll be 5.23 volts when the temperature goes up to 50 degrees C then we've only got about 380 ohms so we do the same calculation, and we find the PD has gone down, uh, sorry, gone up, beg your pardon, to 6.52 volts. Okay, so hopefully from those calculations you can see that the temperature is, a, is affecting the PD across the fixed resistor. How could you change it so the PD across the fixed resistor was 5 volts? Well, okay, you'll see that that's um, at 37 ohms. So we need the voltage across the thermistor to be 4 volts, okay, because the other voltage is 5 volts, so we've got 4 volts across there. So to work out the current, we've got 4 volts over a resistance, well, at 37 degrees C, if you read it off the graph, at 37 degrees C, it's 500 ohms. So we need a current in the circuit of 8 times 10 to the minus 3 amps, okay, which means we must have a total resistance, well, the total voltage is 9 volts divided by the current of 8 times 10 to the minus 3, which gives us 1125 volts for the total resist uh, sorry 1125 ohms for the total resistance which means that the fixed resistor must be 625 ohms okay if you go backwards hopefully you can see that'll work 625 ohms plus um, our thermistor of 500 ohms gives us 1125 which gives us 8 times 10 to the minus 3 amps okay which gives us 4 volts across the thermistor which gives us 5 volts across the fixed resistor Okay, just one last little um, concept, which is quite important, quite quite a handy concept to solve a particular kind of question, as hopefully you'll see. And this is to talk about potential. Um, we generally talk about potential difference, but if we want to connect voltmeters between strange places in circuits, like for example between B and D in this circuit, if we can think about the potential at B and the potential at D, then we can work out the potential difference. So the way we do this is we set a zero, and we set a zero at the negative terminal of the um, battery. We know the potential difference across the battery is 12 volts. This is the gain, okay, so we know this is going to be 12 volts. If we go around to B, okay, then nothing happens. There's no energy loss for the charges on the way around here, so this is still 12. We know the potential difference across here is 4. This is a drop of 4 because it's a resistor, which gives us plus 8 volts there, still plus 8 volts here. We lose two more volts, so we go to plus six volts, and then we lose the last six volts. Okay, so you've always got to check that you've got back to zero by the time you get to here. So these are the potentials at a given point. So if, for example, we did connect a voltmeter between B, which was here, and D, which was here, we can see at B it's 12 volts, at D it's six volts, so the potential difference would be six volts. You probably could work that out from doing four volts here and two volts here. Okay, if you did it between C and E, Okay, so here's C, 8 volts, here's E, 0 volts, so that would be 8 volts. Okay, again, you can see 2 plus 6 is 8, but as you'll see in the next question, sometimes it's quite handy. So in this kind of circuit, they might ask you to connect um, a voltmeter between A and B. Um, 
a bit harder to work out. So we've got a 12 volt battery. Okay, we can work out. Um, the proper way to do this is to add that together. That's 24 ohms down here. Remember, this part of the circuit doesn't affect this part of the circuit. There's 12 volts across these three resistors in total. So um, the current down here is 12 divided by a total of 24 gives you half an amp. Okay, which makes that potential difference 3, that potential difference 3, and this one 6. Okay, in this circuit, we've got a total resistance of 60 ohms. So we've got 0.2 amps going this way. So 0.2 times 24 gives us 4.8 volts there, 2.4 volts there, 4.8 volts there. So we can work out the potentials at various places. So this is 12, it's connected to the battery. Okay, it goes down to 9, down to 6, and then down to 0. If we do the same over here, 12 again there, we lose 4.8, so we've got 7.2, lose another 2.4, down to 4.8, last 4.8, there's my check, it's got to be 0 here. So if you're asked to connect a voltmeter between A and B, A is at plus 9 volts, B is at 4.8 volts, so the difference there gives you 4.2 volts. Okay, and you can connect the potential difference between any two points if you know the potential at that point.